Welcome to another episode of Real Talk with Sesta. My name is Andrew Sesta, and today we're going to talk about the NAR Settlement Agreement and how that affects buyers and sellers as of August 17th, 2024. Many people are saying nothing is going to change. It's business as usual, except we're just not going to be able to post co-brokes in the MLS. Well, I'm here to tell you that's not true. This is a total shift from how business has been done for many, many years. So let's talk about it. So I'm sure by now you've heard about the lawsuit brought against the industry and the NAR settlement agreement that has been reached. You also probably heard a lot of misinformation or half-truths about the shift, such as the seller is no longer has to pay a buyer-side commission. Commissions will be reduced by half. Real estate agents are going to go out of business. You'll be able to buy homes so much cheaper. Well, I'm here to set the record straight. First of all, seller has never paid the buyer side commission. That's right. The sellers have never paid buyer side commission. The fact of the matter is the listing agents are the ones that have paid out of their commission the buyer side commission. This has been called the co-broke. The reason for this was to incentivize buyers to purchase their listing as opposed to other options that perhaps did not pay maybe as much or not at all. For example, for sale by owners, some builder developers. So this was a way of listing agents to incentivize buyers and buyers agents to show their property. The listing agent determined the amount of commission that they were willing to give up or share with the buyer's agent. For example, some agents would share half of their commission, some less, some more, depending on the incentives they felt that was needed to get the home sold. Heck, I've even seen agents in the MLS only offer $1 for code broke just to get it in the MLS. Keep in mind there was never a set amount an agent charged a seller to list their property. As a matter of fact, it is against rules and laws for agents to even discuss their listing commissions with other agencies. This amount was totally up to the agent and the seller to negotiate. As a matter of fact, there are also companies out there that charge the sellers a flat rate just to enter the listing into the MLS, and then the seller would offer a commission incentive amount to the agent that brought them the buyer. So what has changed, you may ask? There are three major changes I kind of want to focus. There's a lot of others, but this is the main issue at hand. It is no longer up to the listing agent, nor will it be legal for the listing agent to incentivize buyers to buy their home by using a buyer's side commission incentive. Listing agents will negotiate their fee to list, market, and sell their home, and the amount is not shared with any other broker or agency. It is now the responsibility of the seller to decide if they want to incentivize the buyer and buyer's agent to show and purchase their home if they so choose. This amount now is totally separate from the agreed-upon listing commission amount. That amount can be discussed up front, and set and determined by the seller, or the seller can choose not to pay an incentive or wait to negotiate that amount when an offer is presented. A good example of this is how sellers now, or in the past, have been able to pay a bonus to a buyer's agent if sold at a certain amount of time or a certain price, how they offer percentages towards closing costs and any other incentives Some sellers have agreed to pay HOA fees and many other things. So basically, it's going to be up to the seller to decide if he wants to to give any kind of incentives over and above the money that he's paying the listing agent to list the property. So let's talk about number two. The MLS also no longer will allow such buyer-side commission incentives to be listed, or even mentioned on the MLS. That's right. There's no way of adding a buyer's side commission incentive on the MLS 
which means the buyers and the buyer's agents will either have to inquire with each and every listing agent to see if there has been a commission incentive preset, or the other option is to negotiate the commission amount when making an offer in the same way all others' wants are verbalized in the contract. So you're probably asking, well, how does this affect the buyer's agent, and now how does the buyer's agent get paid? If the seller is not going to give a seller incentive, this is where the next major change comes in. Number three, just as sellers have always entered into a listing agreement with an agent to list their home for sale, any agent that shows a home to a buyer must enter in a written buyer representation agreement. The agreement will vary from agent to agent and possibly company to company, just as listing agreements do, but the main points will be approximately the same. Number one, they'll spell out the type of representation that they will provide for the buyer, such as single agency, transaction brokerage, etc. Number two will be the length of time for the agreement. We'll have a start date and a proposed end date. Number three, and the biggest one, is the commission amount. The commission amount the buyer agent is expected to earn to represent the buyer in a transaction. Again, just like in a seller and a listing agreement, this amount is negotiated between the agent and the buyer. It will have stipulations in the agreement which will address how the seller incentive commissions will be handled. For example, the buyer agrees to pay a 2.5% commission to the buyer's agent. But in the event a 2.5% commission incentive is given by the seller or negotiated as part of the contract, then there will be no amount due or out-of-pocket to the buyer. Does that make sense? However, in the case where the seller is not willing to pay out a buyer side incentive commission, then the buyer will be responsible to pay the buyer side agreed-upon commission as part of a closing cost, just like anything else in the transaction. Keep in mind, this is only three of what I consider to be the major changes. There are others. I would be more than happy to discuss them in more detail so you would have a deeper understanding of how to position yourself in the best possible light for your next purchase or sale. What I have to say is that realtors' knowledge and experience will now be more valuable than ever. So make sure you fully vet your agent and select one that will represent you properly. Look out for a future video on how to find the right agent in one of my next videos. Thank you very much and have a great day.